400 4.5 s lens indeed so i came from the 200 to 500 but i'm ready for the next stage is that because you were dissatisfied with your 200 to 500 it was good but not quite good enough i think that's a good summary yeah it, it was took me it got me photos amazing results in the right conditions yeah. good light but it was big and heavy not very nice to take out often i had to use a tripod and some of the image renditions were a bit in higher ISOs. So you were looking for something a bit sharper, lighter. So. so there's two major things with wildlife photography I've had the problems with. Not being able to get close enough to the subject. Yep. And you scare them away. And the image quality, which often has to do with light. So not enough light in the situation. Okay. Right. And there's the requirements going into this, and this is why I've upgraded. But will this stand up to the test? Can this 400 lens meet the 500 millimeter in image quality by cropping in? That's kind of what we're considering as well. When I was doing these tests, I was considering what if I had the 180 to 600? I shot at 6.3 a lot and thought about the weight comparisons as well while I was yeah. using the 200 to 500. VR, how low could I go with this lens? Because it's so super light and has a better VR, I would think, than the 200 to 500. Yeah. Then we have more artistic Oh, aims steady. with it okay. <laughs> so you have the image look and image rendition right. and the bokeh yeah will it be noticeably better so in terms of sharpness you've done a load of tests were you satisfied that it's sharper than the 200 to 500 sharp enough for your requirements in summary i would say it wasn't as mind-blowingly different huh. as mm. i was led to believe maybe by other youtubers you've got to stop watching youtube you know dangerous isn't it yeah well the difference is they used tripod without VR I used it as I'm going to use it as walking hand around held, VR, yeah, hand yeah, held, yeah. walking around and I was surprised that this 200 to 500 which is bought out in 2015 mm. as a budget wildlife yeah, lens nine years ago stands up to it it really does you have to I have to go in to 200% to see the differences wow. in daylight yeah so the big test for me was whether the 400 prime would be able to crop in to match the zoom lens and you can see the difference in perspective here, 400 to 500 millimeter. So let's crop in. Yeah, I would say the zoom lens is ever so slightly sharper on the texture of the writing here. You get to see that scratch there. It's not so present on the 400, but there isn't much in it. So with the higher ISOs, the image quality obviously degrades. Yeah. But with the camera's technology so good now, I'm going to stick them into Lightroom, automatically apply sharpening and noise reduction, mm -hmm. and it's fantastic. So one of these images was taken at 4.5 and the other at 6.3. Well, for me, I can't tell the difference between them. Maybe in the background here, you can see the twigs have definition, but on the actual subject, I can't tell any difference in sharpness, which is great because you can shoot at 4.5 and it's sharp wide open so I increase the shutter speed now which will increase the ISO 1000 to 2000 ISO and again on the subject I can't tell any difference if this is at 200% whereas the background does look a bit more noisy but again that's the background and can be blurred out with subject separation so even shooting at 6.3 I didn't even see that much difference right. until you reach at least 10,000 ISO. And I've done low light tests, really extreme low light, light tests, and that's when you start to see the difference. Right. When you crop in, until you, if you don't crop in, even at max ISO, you can't tell much difference. And this could be the case if you're in a dense wood or you're at sunrise or sunset. That's when the differences might be more obvious. So at 1 25th of a second, it's 25,600. Well, it's doubled for the 6.3. In a 100% crop, you can see the obvious differences here. The noise in the shadows on the 6.3 is very noisy and colour damaged. You could say the actual writing, where it's in the light, is very similar. And for those with a 500 PF, this is the difference. So again, it's quite a bit noisier than a 4.5. And then you've got the 6.3. And then even F9. Of course, if you can, you can lower your shutter speed to, this is 140 if I did now, and the image is, uh, is obviously a lot better. So you can see the 6.3 is still a lot more colour damaged than the 4.5, which hardly looks any noise at all. 
But comparing it to the 200 to 500, it, this, when it starts to fall down a bit, the image rendition starts to fall apart as it gets more challenging situations, like with bright lights and shadows. I think that's the best way to put it, is this has a lot more containment of image rendition. Right. I would have thought, I would have expected there to perhaps be a bigger difference between the two. I was expecting a massive difference yeah. between the two. And there hasn't been? No. Which is, this again, the 200-500 is really standing up. It just shows up. how good that is, yeah. What's the, sort of the lowest shutter speed you could get down to for sharp images used, relying on the VR? Well, it's down to the Z8 a lot, and that's right. sensational with VR. I, I was surprised both lenses performed exceptionally well. Even the 200-500, I could go to a 30th, I think. Wow. Handheld, indoors though. <laughs> So with this lens, I went down to a tenth of a second, and that's incredible. 400 millimeter, I went yeah. down to one tenth handheld to get steady reels. Amazing. But you have to take four or five, I think it's about 20% hit rate, but that's all relying on if the subject is still. Right, yep, <laughs> yep. And indoors, it's a lot easier, because outdoors you've got the wind, environment, and everything else. And this is optimal for both lenses here, handheld in near darkness, and you can see the clear difference in the image quality on the places in focus and in the shadows. Dramatic differences. When a bird is perching, I like to quickly shut the shutter speed as low as I can go mm. to get the, you know, I want to get to see those fine details. Yeah. I want to see the feathers. Just trying to get the ISO down. Yeah. Was it um, quick to focus? How did that the focus speed compared to the 200 to 500 and <laughs> some of your other Z mount lenses? Yeah, well, with the Z8, I'm used to, with people, it's flawless. With birds, smaller birds, even this lens did struggle at times. Because when the birds are quite small in the frame, yeah. I was expecting it to be better, which is silly really, because you know people and birds is a completely different kind yeah. of thing. But uh, the 200-500 again does really well because of the Z8, mm -hmm. but it struggles not sometimes to find the acquisition of right. the focus. Yep. So it searches a bit more. Pointing you know? in and out slightly. Because they're different uh, focus motors, aren't yeah. they? So here's an example of near to far focus speed using the 400. And that's really quick. With the 200 to 500, near to far was a lot slower. As you can see there, it took a long time. So you're playing around with it there. What is the handling like? I imagine it's very good because, I mean, I noticed the weight difference yeah. is huge. It's no bigger than the 70 to 200, is it? I mean, it's bigger diameter, but this Light. is about 200 gram lighter. Lighter, okay. Which is yeah, crazy, yeah. really, yeah. for the focal length. But the handling is the biggest difference. Maybe that's a bit strange that the biggest benefit of this lens is I'm paid more for less. Right. The Nikon 200-500, which is 2,300 gram. The 500 PF is 1,460. And the 180 to 600 is 2,140 gram. Fits in all my bags, and I don't notice I've Which got is it. crucial, to be honest, isn't it? Because you're not going to hesitate to take it out with you. Whereas the 200 to 500, for instance, you've got to think, yeah. do I really, is it really going to be worth dragging it out? Am I actually going to get any shots with it? So. I was around my local park in Woods for over three hours just holding it in use. Yeah and no problem, I didn't even notice I had it. And even, you know, to use it upright, which is a strain on your body, obviously, more yeah. strain. I had no problems whatsoever. You can hand hold it better for VR, yeah. steady your photos. Yeah. And, and you think about the 180 to 600, that's only about two or 300 gram lighter than the 200 to 500. Mm. So yeah. I'm thinking, and it's bigger lengthwise because it doesn't zoom in and out. Because that was my point, was it? In the introductory mm. video when you bought it, I was yeah. thinking, you know, you really, you, you should have gone for the flexibility of the zoom. Yeah. But I get that if it's like half the weight or whatever, yeah. then you're just going to take it and use it. Whereas you're going to think twice with a 180 to 600. Because you wouldn't have guessed that probably at the beginning, that the, the biggest benefit is it's just a lighter lens, as opposed to being sharper and yeah. uh, all the rest of it. What about the look? Because I mean, I'm a big believer in that I love the look of the 70 to 200 yep. compared yep. to other lenses. It's beautiful. What about that? Is it is the look of that significantly different or better than the 200 to 500? I, I didn't see much difference, Ooh. which I'm a bit disappointed Ooh, with, okay, again. Because yeah. again, the 200 to 500 is a, obviously a DSLR F-mount lens. Mm. I was expecting bigger differences. I, I've sent, I can put them on the screen now and not majorly different. Right, okay. And maybe that's the body 
trying to influence that a bit more. But I have seen bigger differences with my F-mount lenses. But it, it does have a great image rendition, no question about it. Hmm. And when it comes to bokeh, for those who care about the image compression depth of field. The shape of the balls. It's all about the shape of balls. I like the vortex look. So right. in the middle they're round and then yeah. on the edges they're more onion shaped, circular. Right, yeah, yeah. And that draws you in to the image. I yeah. like it. Yeah. I know that people just like perfect round all the way around. All, all over this. I was expecting a bigger difference again shooting at 4.5 to 6.3. Yeah. Because this is one of the obviously one of the highlights of this lens is the 4.5. Yeah. The bit okay the background's always a bit busier and a bit noisier in higher ISOs, but on lightning you just select the background soften done i'm a prime guy you know i like my fast oh, i do know that yes so again i'd be happy to shoot this at 6.3 for the depth of field and not worry about the bokeh and the, mm. and the um okay. image compression so however when you shoot with a zoom lens at both at 400 but 6.3 there's quite a lot of difference between them the zoom lens has a much busier background so in terms of choice of focal length, I mean, it, even with primes, you could have gone 500. Yes. Um, um, well, anyway, and you've got the zooms with the bigger flexibility. Are you happy with a 400mm focal length prime? Yes. Ooh. Yes and no. Ooh. So all my photos on the slideshow on this video, I've cropped in at least 100%. Right. <laughs> so that tells you something about the focal length. Yeah. Is it right so or wrong? So you still want more, really? I've never had an issue where I've been too close. Right, yeah. But what are the alternatives though? Whatever they are, they're going to be bigger, longer, heavier. The 500 PF is the other option, and yeah. that's okay. What about the price? The price has price dropped. Since I bought this lens, it's dropped again because of the 600 coming out. So would you have gone for that if that price was there now instead yes, of that? Yes, I would, would have gone for the 500 right. PF. How much was that? I got it for 2,500. Wow, that's a lot of money in there. But it's 3,300 new. Wow, okay. <laughs> Crazy, okay. Crazy prices, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 600 obviously has come out now, but that's £5,000. It's a different marketplace, really. It isn't is, it? yeah. Because you said at the start of this, I should have gone for a more flexible 180 to 600. Yeah. Now, after the tests and what I've said to you now, yeah. do you still stand by that? I think uh, not really, I guess, because I understand. I suppose I wasn't putting enough weight in thinking on the difference, sorry, yeah, ironically, <laughs> in the difference in weight. I, I sort of get it now, not so much with the prime against zoom, but actually a much lighter lens being far more useful and far more likely for you to take out. I mean, I mean well, if you, you don't have any of them. I no, guess. no. So if you could choose, if you're looking for get a wildlife lens now, yeah. which one would you go for? Uh, that's a great question. I do like the flexibility of zooms, even though, you know, really, I suppose you, it's like 400 to 400 plus because you're cropping in. And I would be weighing up really between the 180 to 600 and that still, because the 180 to 600 is how much cheaper? 700 quid cheaper? Yeah. yeah. And what was the 500 PF, did you say? Well, I've seen one for 1,300. Which is almost half the price of what you pay for that. So, yeah. And it's only 300 grams heavier. It, now that price has come down to that, I would seriously be mm. considering that are you still happy you bought it I'm, I'm happy with my purchase despite the 500 pf a bit annoying that it's gone down even more but mm. i am really happy with it i love the super light lens it's i'm disappointed that it's not as big a difference as i thought it was going to be and i love taking it out and that's the biggest thing is to take it out and using it yeah which i've really enjoyed doing the rain and the mud and mm. trenching through it. I really enjoyed this. Well, I mean, that's crucial. Isn't it? If you love using it, yeah, state the obvious, you're going to use it, aren't you? Yeah. Whereas if you've got one that's capable, but you know, heavy, it's not going to go in your bag anywhere near as often, is it? No, no. <laughs> so yes, this does get my stamp of approval. It's a really nice quality lens. What about you then? So just to get your stamp of approval. Well, it, it, I mean, it has to really. It's not a lens for me because I don't have the same use for it. But mm. you can't. I mean, it, it's just a good lens. It's uh, so the, really, the next step, because I said the, the focal length is a bit short sometimes, and I'm like, ah, we've had bad experiences with teleconverters. If before. only I hadn't sold my 1.4, you could have tried it, couldn't you? Or bought it off me. And so that's the next video we're probably going to do, Ooh. because... Uh... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I didn't see that coming. Is it the 1.4 or the two times? Two times? Two times Whoa. teleconverter. How much was that? I got it on a really good deal. You know me, obviously. You always do, yeah. So that makes that into an 800, but what's the f-stop? Does that go to f9? Have you used it yet? I've done a few little tests. <laughs> <laughs>
I was curious, but no, I need to do it a lot more. Yeah. And we're in the bleakest of darker winter at the moment, yeah, yeah, mid-winter. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't, it's not even getting much daylight. The cameras yeah. won't show it. So I think in the spring and summer, this lens will come into its own again. Yeah, yeah. And I'm hoping that this... Very exciting.